السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا أهل الصلاة يا على الفلاح يا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه He said once I had a camel which I owned and this camel had come to the point that I wanted to let it go, meaning it was so exhausted and it was so old and tired, it was of no use to me anymore. Like when someone has an old car and the car barely moves, you know, and he wants to buy a new car. So he said, I wanted to get rid of this camel because it's of no use to me anymore. And he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he touched the camel and he supplicated for the camel. And Jabir radiallahu anhu, he said that after he supplicated for this camel, because of the supplication of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the camel started to move energetically, and he moved in a way which I never saw it move before. It was energetic, and it was full of energy and full of vigor. And so he was happy because of this, this new lease of life which the camel had because of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to Jabir, sell this camel to me. I want this camel. And Jabir radiallahu anhu said, no, I don't want to give you this camel. This camel has been blessed by your messenger of Allah. I want to keep this camel for myself. Again, the messenger of Allah sallam, said to him, sell me this camel, give this camel to me. I'll buy this camel off you for a, number, for, for, for a certain amount. So Jabir radiallahu anhu, how could he refuse the offer of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam? So... He decided to sell the camel to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, I'll sell it to you on one condition. I want to ride this camel one more time. Let me ride it one more time and then I'll bring it to your home and then I'll get the money from you. Because he felt this attachment to this camel now. Because of its you know, new vigor and this newfound energy that it had. So he rode this camel one more time to the house of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he took the money for the camel. And he was walking away. And you can imagine maybe he's a bit upset because he had its attachment to this camel now. The messenger of Allah والسلام, sent a man after him and told him to come back. And when he went back to the messenger of Allah والسلام, the messenger of Allah وسلم, looked at him and he said to him, do you think that I bargained with you in order to take away your camel from you? Take your camel and keep the money as well. They're both for you. 
So Jabir radiallahu an ended up having the money and also the camel, which was blessed by the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. There's many lessons we can learn from this incident which took place. One of the lessons that I want to focus on today, brothers and sisters, is the fact that even the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam understood the concept of buying and selling. He knew that the world worked in a way in which things are bought and things are sold. This concept of buying things and selling things. In Islam, things are divided into two. Our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our interactions and relationships with other human beings. And one of the main chapters of fiqh is the chapter of buying and selling. Because it's considered to be something important. At one point or another in our lives, we're going to buy or sell something. Whether it's something small or whether it's something big. Whether it's food or clothes or something for the house. Or whether it's a, something big. A big thing like a, you know, a car or a house or something big. At one point or another, we're going to be buying or selling something in our lives. The problem is that when we leave the masjid and we go to our shops and we go to our shopping malls or even our businesses where we sell things and we buy things, we forget to realize that Islam is a complete way of life. And when we're in those places, Islam has taught us how to behave. And Islam has come with certain etiquettes and certain manners when it comes to buying and selling. The Muslim identity isn't just for the masjid place or for when a person prays, or for you know, a certain time of the year, for example, in Ramadan. A Muslim is always a Muslim wherever he is. And he shows the manners and the etiquettes of a Muslim wherever he is and whatever he's getting involved in. The Muslims of the Far East, they became Muslim not through any expeditions or through any wars of the Muslims, but because they interacted with the Muslims who came from Yemen and they did business with them. And they saw the etiquette and their manners they saw how they, how they interacted with them. And because of this, they were so impressed that they became Muslim. What kind of manners and etiquettes did they show? How can a person show manners and etiquettes through buying and selling? What does Islam say with regards to buying and selling? When a person forgets about Islam and Islamic manners and the Islamic identity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forget that individual. And there won't be any blessing in the things that he buys and sells. And a person needs to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these places in which fitna is strife and fitna is common. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Khayrul baqa'il masajid. He said, the best places are the masajid, are the masjids. Because the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is common in them. And he said, Washarul baqa'il aswaq. He said, the worst places are the marketplaces. Because it's full of lying, it's full of cheating, it's full of raised voices. It's all about the dunya and it's all about the world. So when a person buys and sells, he needs to remember that he is a Muslim first and foremost. And he needs to abide by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and what the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said with regard to the etiquettes of buying and selling. A person when he forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he buys and sells something, he may lose the barakah of that item that he bought or that he sold. I know someone who bought a car, and before he bought the car, the car was fine. There was nothing wrong with the car. Perfect condition. As soon as he bought the car, all he got was problems. And maybe some of us can relate to this. You know, you buy something in excellent condition. Once you buy it, that's it. It's like there's nothing but problems. It gives you nothing but issues and problems. Because when a person forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's no barakah and there's no blessing in the things that he buys and the things that he sells. So what etiquette does a person show when he buys and he sells? How can he show his Muslim identity when he's interacting with others and is involved in something as worldly as buying and selling and as worldly as money and finances and transactions? One of the first things that a person can do is to remember and beware and be careful not to get involved in buying and selling things which are haram, things which are forbidden. Because your sins and buying and selling things which are haram are a reason for you to become unsuccessful. 
and they'll cause problems in your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That whatever strikes you of any calamities or any disasters, then it's because of what your own hands have caused. It's because of the things that you did. It's because of your own actions. It's because of the consequences of your own actions. And whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever is God conscious of Allah azza wa jal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for him. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whomsoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find for him a way out. وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِ And he'll provide for him in ways which he never even imagined. So when a person remembers Allah, and he's aware of Allah, and he's conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's buying and selling, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless his buying and selling, and he'll bless his wealth. Another etiquette of buying and selling is that a person shouldn't sacrifice his faith for the sake of money and for the sake of business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, O you who believe, idha nudiya li salati min yawm al When the call is made for the day of Friday, meaning the Friday prayer, this very day today, and this very salah we're going to pray in a while. Allah azza wa jalla says, when the call is made, fas'aw ila dhikrillah, then hasten, rush to the remembrance of Allah, wadharu al and leave trade, leave buying and selling. This is better for you if only you knew. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us, and when he tells us to remember Allah, and to leave trade, and to attend the salawat, and to attend the Friday prayer, and when we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before our businesses and before our money, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of that, he's going to bless our wealth. And when we don't make our religion our priority, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't going to make us his priority. And we're not going to be successful in this world. Another etiquette of buying and selling brothers and sisters is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often when you're in the marketplaces, when you're in the shopping malls, when you're in your shops buying and selling things. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the very same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةِ When the prayer finishes, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Then spread out in the earth and seek the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot so that you are تُفْلِحُونَ So that you are successful. So success won't come except when, Allah, when a person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Success won't come to an individual if he doesn't remember Allah azza wa jal. He needs to be conscious of Allah. He needs to remember, be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Keeping his tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he's in the marketplace. The key to success in trade in, and in business is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam told us a supplication to say when entering the marketplace. He told us to say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulku wa lahu al hamd, yuhya wa yumit wa huwa hayu la yamut, biyadihi al khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he would tell us to make this dua when entering the marketplace. And he even told us of supplicating and making a dua when buying a riding beast. He would tell his companions that when you buy a riding beast, take hold of it. If you buy a camel, take hold of the camel's hump and make dua. Allahumma inni as'alka khayraha wa khayra ma jabaltaha alayh. Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma jabaltaha alayh. Oh Allah, I seek or I ask you for the goodness of what I have. This, the goodness of this thing. And I ask you to make her inclined towards good. And I seek refuge with you from its evil and whatever evil it's inclined towards. And these du'as are available in du'a books. And a person should remember these supplications when buying things. He should be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these situations. And the same du'a can be used when buying a car. The same concept, it's the same thing because it's something that you use to get from one place to another. Another etiquette of buying and selling is being honest and not lying when buying and selling. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said that the two parties to a transaction have the option of counseling until they depart. And then he said, فَإِن صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَ بُورِكَ لَهُمَ فِي بَيْعِهِمَا That if they're honest with one another and they don't disclose, the seller doesn't disclose any defects of the product. بُورِكَ لَهُمَ فِي بِعِهِمَا Then that trading, that transaction is going to be blessed. It's going to be a blessed transaction. You know, sometimes a person goes to the shop and he asks for something. 
and he wants to buy something. And he asks for the price, and the person tells him the price. The seller tells him the price, and he says, well, I went to this shop, and they sell it for this amount. They sell it for a lot cheaper than here. You know, he never went to any other shop, but he just wants it cheaper. And so he lies in order to get something cheaper. If this is the way you're going to go about buying things, then don't expect any barakah and blessings in the things that you buy. Likewise, the seller, he may say there's nothing else on the market. No other shop has this product. And the shop next door has exactly the same thing. So a person needs to be careful when buying and selling. The messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, وَإِن كَتَمَا وَكَذِبَ That if they, if they lie and they conceal and they hide the defects of the thing that they're selling, the blessing will be erased. The blessing won't be there anymore. The blessing of this transaction won't exist anymore. The messenger of Allah, وسلم, he talked about the honest tradesman, the honest businessman. And he said, أَتَّاجِرُ الصَّدُوقُ الْأَمِينَ That the honest trustworthy businessman is with the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs because of his honesty because of him being honest when it comes to matters of money and buying and selling this is the status of the honest businessman and it's not something which is easy which is why the reward is great it's very rare today to see someone who is involved in business and is an honest person and is trustworthy and this is why it's held in such high regard. Also, from the attitude of selling brothers and sisters, is showing leniency when you buy and when you sell. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Rahimallahu rajalan, samhan idha ba' wa samhan idha ashtara wa samhan idha qtaba. He said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the one who is easygoing, the one who's lenient when he buys and he's lenient when he sells and he's lenient when he asks for his money back. The one who's easygoing. Sometimes we haggle with people to buy something. And we haggle to the extent that we end up lying. And our voices are raised. And we start becoming angry with one another. And we may even get into a physical fight with people. All over a few pounds all over this money which comes and goes every single day. And a person goes through all of these things just you know, for, for this worldly thing, for this temporary pleasure that he, he'll obtain from this thing that he's buying. A person should be easy going. He should take it easy. Be lenient in buying and selling. And if he's lenient in buying and selling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow his mercy on that individual who from amongst us doesn't need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person, when he buys, when he sells, take it easy. Don't go overboard. Don't lose your rag over a few pounds. Don't become angry. Don't lie. Don't get physical just over something trivial as money which comes and goes. Another etiquette of buying and selling, brothers and sisters, is refraining from swearing and making oaths by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a person may sell something and he'll say, Wallahi, this product is the best product on the market. And he knows it's not the best product on the market. He knows there's other things which are better. And he knows there's nothing special about his product. But he's trying to sell it. And when he tries to sell it in this way, the blessing won't be there anymore. And when a person makes an oath, it's not something you know, insignificant. You're swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator, that this product that you have is the best product out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of the things that you buy and the things that you sell. So a person needs to be careful. He needs to be careful. He needs to make sure that he doesn't make oaths when buying and selling. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam, he said that the oath may sell the product. You may be able to sell the product when you make an oath. People may be impressed. They may take your word for it. But he said, you may sell the product, but it annihilates the blessing. Mumhiqun lil baraka. Mumhiqatun lil baraka. It gets rid of the blessing of the thing that you're selling. So a person needs to be careful when he sells something, not to always make oaths by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ don't follow every habitual swearer, the one, who always, the one who's always making oaths, because it's not something which is considered good. A person who's always making oaths, one day he's going to fall into the trap of lying, while making an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person needs to be conscious when he's buying and selling things. Even the buyer, 
He needs to be careful. He can't make oaths when buying something if he knows that he's not being honest and he's not being truthful. Another etiquette, brothers and sisters, of buying and selling is to increase in giving sadaqah, to increase in giving charity if you're involved in a business where you're buying and you're selling things. The Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he stood up once. And he called out to the businessmen and to the merchants. And he said, Ya ma'ashara tujja. He said, O oh, merchants, verily the shaitan and sins attend the transaction. When you make a transaction, the shaitan attends that transaction. And sins are surrounding this transaction. And he said, because of this, mix that transaction with sadaqah, with charity. Give charity, give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that there's blessing in the things that you buy and the things that you sell. So that there's no sin surrounding the things that you're transacting or you're buying and you're selling. So a person, when he buys and when he sells, he needs to at the same time give in charity. You know, give a small amount to charity. Give something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's many people who are in need. There's many, you know, initiatives taking place. This very masjid is preparing to make a bread factory in Syria. And it's a perfect opportunity for a person to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to purify his wealth, to purify and put blessing in his wealth by, you know, giving for this beautiful cause. Another etiquette of buying and selling, my dear brothers and sisters, is paying off debts as soon as possible. And not delaying in paying off debts. Sometimes businesses have debts that they need to pay off. And they leave it for a week or for a month or even for a, for a year. Or even longer. And these debts are on that person. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, talked about the seriousness of debts. And he said that the soul of the believer is suspended because of the debt until it's paid off. He said a person won't enter into Jannah until his debts are paid off. Even if it's a small amount. Even if it's a penny. Even if it's one pound or two pounds. A person needs to pay off his debts. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he once traveled from Yemen to Iraq in search of knowledge. And he borrowed a pen. He borrowed a pen. And he traveled back after his search of knowledge and he remembered he still had the pen. After arriving at his destination, he went all the way back just to give that pen back. Because he knew that this is an amana. He knew that if this isn't given back, then it's a debt on his behalf. So a person needs to be careful when it comes to debts. Don't delay in giving debts, brothers and sisters, because somebody else might not know about the debts that you have. Someone else might not know about your debts. And if you die today, then who's going to pay off that debt? And a, a person's soul will be suspended, and he won't enter Jannah until that debt is paid off, or until that person forgives that individual, if he even finds out that that person has died. Another etiquette of buying and selling, brothers and sisters, is to let a buyer counsel the transaction if he regrets it. The Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he said, Man aqala Musliman, aqalahu Allahu athratahu yawm al qiyama. He said that whoever lets a Muslim off in a transaction, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve him of distress on the day of judgment. If a person buys something of you and he regrets it later, and this Muslim brother, he comes back to you and he says, look, I made a mistake, I, didn't want, I don't want this anymore. Then if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve you of your distress on the day of judgment, then relieve him of his distress and take that product back. Because it's not worth it, brothers and sisters. It's not worth the, the stress of the day of judgment to not have this mercy to your fellow Muslim brother if he regrets a transaction. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses our wealth and he blesses our buying and selling. Aqoola qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum innahu huwa al-ghafoorul rahim wa sallallahu wa sallam ala meena muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.
بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. We were talking about the etiquette of buying and selling and how Islam has come with a complete package, a complete way of life. Islam isn't just something that a person, you know, does in the masjid. He's not just a Muslim in the masjid or at a specific time of the year like in Ramadan. But wherever he is, whatever he's doing, he's showing his Islam and he's showing the etiquettes of a Muslim and his Muslim identity. And it's no different when he buys and when he sells and when he's at work and when he's in the shop or when he's buying something or selling something as part of his business. Even then he's a Muslim and he shows those etiquettes. And a person needs to be careful when he buys and when he sells so that he has that blessing in his wealth. So that he has that etiquette of a Muslim and he's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when buying and selling. And we mentioned some etiquettes of buying and selling. We mentioned that a person shouldn't get involved in buying and selling haram things. And you should always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember Allah azza wa jal when you're in the marketplace, when you're in the shopping malls, because it's full of fitna, it's full of fusuq, it's full of sins. And a person forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that situation. And we mentioned a person should show lenience. Lenience when buying and selling, taking it easy and not making oaths and not disclosing any, not hiding any defects, you know, showing full disclosure when it comes to any defects the product that he's selling may have. So all of these etiquettes that I mentioned, these are things which a Muslim should do. And when we talk about these types of etiquettes, brothers and sisters, we need to apply these etiquettes to ourselves first before anybody else. A person shouldn't go to the shop and say, you know, the, the Prophet ﷺ said a person should be lenient in selling. So you should be lenient with, with selling with me, you know, so that you're obeying the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. Because he needs to apply that hadith to himself before he applies it to anybody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and then your families from the hellfire. So whenever a person hears any piece of advice, any ayah in the Qur'an, any hadith of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, advising something or forbidding something, he needs to think about how he can apply it to himself before he thinks about other individuals and how they're, they're falling short in that situation or in that thing. A person needs to reflect on himself, needs to always and constantly be improving himself. It may be, brothers and sisters, that because of your etiquette, because of your manners and the things that you show from your Islamic etiquette and manners and from as part of your Islamic identity, it may be that because of your Islam, when buying and selling, that other people will see this who aren't Muslim and they'll accept Islam. That may be the case. The people who were trade from Yemen, when they were trading with those people from the Far East, they had the intention of making money. That was their goal, that was their intention. They never mm -hmm. thought that these people would become Muslim. They were buying and selling. But they abided to the etiquettes of Islam. And because of this, those people became Muslim. Now imagine the reward of those people who because of them, those Muslims from the Far East, from Indonesia, and from Malaysia, they accepted Islam. Imagine their reward. Because of your etiquette, because of your manners, it may be that a person will deal with you. Maybe you're selling something on eBay, on Gumtree, whatever it is. You're selling something and you show your Islamic etiquettes when you're dealing with that person that you're buying or you're selling from. And because of your etiquette, because of your manners, he becomes impressed. You know, we can't afford in this day and age to not be open with our deen with regards to our etiquettes and our manners and showing our deen in the correct way. Many people have false ideas about Islam. So a person shows his Islam in any way which he can. And maybe because of this, a person will see this and he'll realize that Islam isn't what I, what I read you know, in the newspapers. Islam isn't what I see on the television. These people are good. They're honest people. It may be that he may accept Islam. Or at the very least, he'll be sympathetic to the Muslims. And he won't have a false image of Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses our wealth and that as a result, 
of our etiquettes and manners of buying and selling, we enter into Jannah with the prophets and with the truthful and with the martyrs. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma aghfir al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. اللهم انصر إخوان المسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم ودعوه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أعلى وأولى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Sawas for Fakum, straighten your rows. Straightening the rows is from the perfection of the prayer, so make sure your rows are straight. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر
سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر بسم الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
Allahu Akbar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته just a few announcements Task Force GLM have partnered up with various bread factories in Ibalib, Syria, with the aim to bake enough bread to provide up to 12 million Syrian refugees with bread free of charge, inshallah. We ask all our brothers and sisters to donate generously towards this noble project. Please remember, for every person that receives bread from the factory, you will, inshallah, Ruid, be rewarded immensely. As announced in previous weeks, every Friday after Jummah, we'll be holding a snack stall outside both brothers and sisters' entrances. All proceeds will go towards the bread factory, inshallah. Please visit the stores on your way out and make a purchase. Sisters at GLM, in association with the Task Force Syria, are holding a sister's charity dinner, raising money to feed Syrian people on Saturday the 6th of June from 4 till 8 p.m., there will be performances, stalls, auctions, a three-course meal and much more. Tickets are £15 and can be purchased from, all, from the stalls outside or alternatively from the reception during office hours. Sisters are also taking donations of brand new or once worn bedding clothes for the event. Tonight's Urdu lecture will take place after Maghrib Salah. The Saturday lecture after Maghrib is entitled The Battle, the Battle of Uhud and will be delivered by Abu Abdullah Abbas, inshallah. Our food bank also requires d- donations, so please leave your donations at the office. If you are struggling to find work, need help in completing your CV, or need interview skills, we are now offering a service for you. GLM Job Club is running every Monday with morning sessions for sisters and afternoon sessions for brothers. For, all, for more information, please come to reception through door C. The volunteers here at GLM are the backbone of the masjid. Volunteers run everything that we deliver here at GLM, including our new services. We are now recruiting for more volunteers, so to get involved, please contact us here at the masjid. Green Lane Masjid will be holding a Trabiya camp here at the masjid from Saturday the 30th to Sunday the 31st of May, inshallah. This will be an opportunity for you to benefit from the excellent instructors, interesting workshops, as well as fun-filled recreational activities. The camp is for brothers only and is free of charge. Registration is required and can be done through our website or in the reception. The sisters are holding a ghusl and shroud workshop tomorrow between 10 and 1 p.m. inshallah. All sisters who are interested, please approach the sisters as soon as possible as spaces are limited. Once again, please donate generously on the way out, inshallah. Jazakallah khair.